ಓಂ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಓಕೆ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಐ ಸಮರೈಸ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಕ್ವೆಶ್ಚನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫಿಕೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಎನಿ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗೀತಾ ಎನಿ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಎನಿ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫಿಕೇಷನ್ ದಸ್ ವೈ ಪುಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಕಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗೀತಾ ನಾಟ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ please shoot hello yeah yeah rohit yeah i have few questions so uh, first one is uh, you have also explained before that but the question is how is this uh, the vedas are revealed directly not indirectly uh, one second uh, can you speak a bit louder how is the vedas revealed to the rishis revealed directly not indirectly as others okay i'll that. cover that yeah then what the other question others are from chapter 15 okay so how were the vedas revealed remember shabda is the pramanam so that shabda when it becomes the pramanam becomes the means for knowing pramanam means means for knowing okay not authority etc when you read translations on the net etc you will see pramana translated as authority it's not authority pramakaranam pramanam that which gives rise to knowledge is called pramana so shabda the pramana for vedanta has to come from an outside source now the question is they were also seen as mantra drashtas so this is where the confusion comes did they see the mantras or what yes as far as mantra drashta you can say they saw the mantra heard the mantra in their meditation this that etc you can say that when it comes to the upanishads in fact in every upanishad practically there is always the upanishadic rishi going to a teacher to learn almost every upanishad except if there are very small upanishads where they are done away with those frills like if you take isa vasi upanishad it is not mentioned there but if you take a little bit more elaborate upanishad like mundaka for example or kato upanishad there is always the thing about the rishi going to a teacher sometimes the teacher is brahma ji himself <laughs> okay the lord himself so there is always this thing that the truth the knowledge of the truth was revealed to the rishi by the lord ishara so ishara is the first the first teacher is ishara that's it that's why we say sada shiva samarambha starting with the lord himself okay. yeah until my teacher the salutation go on so it's always like that the teaching can be very elaborate like if you look at the gita the teaching is very elaborate or it can be very brief one of the briefest teaching is in the ananda valli of taitri upanishad when we see taitri upanishad we will do that we will see that very very brief he just gives a definition of brahman says figure it out <laughs> so that's a brief teaching or it's an elaborate teaching sometimes a teacher helps the student to formulate the question you will see that in kato upanishad for example all that is waiting for us you know <laughs> because after this we are going to go into all the upanishad yeah couple of classes after the vedic wisdom festival we will start the upanishad where which brings me to another question here uh, i may have to shift this time okay because i am combining two three classes together how is friday night 637 okay for you all for a class friday night 7 o'clock is okay okay fine so this class doesn't have an issue with friday night 7 o'clock because even if you want to go for dinner after that 8 o'clock you can still go you know dinner or catching up with your friends or a party a late night party 8 o'clock is in bombay considered good time <laughs> so 8 30 you can reach wherever you want to reach that class that this is one class which will be completely online okay maybe once in a way we will meet somewhere okay 
because I am combining my Matunga class, my Chambur class and my South Bombay class, three classes I am combining. So, maybe once a week I can travel and meet people in different places and the laptop is always on, so not a, not a problem. Okay, so that much for that. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Swamiji, so when you explained, so when Gita was told by Krishna, he was in a human form, so that is fine. He was? But for, he was in a human form, like, yeah, he was yeah, there. Yeah. But for other, he has been Brahma and all, so they might not be there. They may not be in human form. That's okay. Okay. So, so it's like whichever way it be, but the teaching is evident, like yeah. they seem to be there. So we say that, okay. Yeah, like there is a there was a teacher called Hayagriva, who was a, whose head was like a horse. <laughs> yeah, as now <laughs> was he an alien? <laughs> was he? He is supposed to be one of the manifestations of Vishnu, Lord Vishnu. Okay, yeah. So can be in any form. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And there are there is one more question regarding uh, verse uh, from chapter fifteen. Uh, 16th verse. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, 15th chapter. 16th, 16th, 16th verse. verse, right? 16th and 18th. Just briefly, can you just tell us? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Here he is talking about Kshara and Akshara Purusha. Kshara Purusha is the world that you see, what is subject to declining. Akshara Purusha is the cause Ishara or Maya. Okay? Consciousness manifests as Maya. So, with predominantly looking at it from Maya standpoint, we are saying that is Akshara. And Uttama Purusha is put as a pure consciousness. Okay. Uttama Purusha Stanya Paramatma Tudagrataha. It is also called Paramatma. Your Loka Trayam Avishya Vibharti Avyaya Ishara. So the pure consciousness is presented as Uttama Purusha. That is why Prathama Purusha is third person in Sanskrit. Unless specified, it always refers to Ishwara. <laughs> because he is the first born. <laughs> he is the first manifestation. <laughs> yeah. Clear, Rohit? Yeah, okay. So the, the Atma and Paramatma is the same, right? Yeah. See, there are two standpoints. When you are looking at the consciousness manifest through a finite form, we will refer to the consciousness as Atma. When the consciousness is manifest through the totality of forms, we will use the word Paramatma. Both refers to the same thing. Just to make the standpoint clear, we are using Atma, Paramatma, Jiva, Ishwara, etc. That is just to make the standpoint clear. Otherwise, it is one consciousness alone. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Sugand. Yeah. contextual. So, I have always been wondering that in the context of uh, Pandavas, mm. so I have always uh, read and uh, I mean, it, was, it has been, I mean, I have always found Yudhishthara to be someone who is known as, who follows Dharma. Yeah. Through. Yeah. So, following the path of what is right, basically. Yeah. Then, why is Gita given to Arjuna and not Yudhishthira. Okay, good question. This, since Yudhishthira was known as Dharma Raja, why was the truth not revealed to Yudhishthira and but to Arjuna instead? There can be a couple of reasons for it. One was, hey, Arjuna was the one who asked for the knowledge. <laughs> okay. He said, Sishya Steyam Shadi Maam Tvam Prapanna. So, the idea is the truth is revealed to someone who asks for it. Okay. And it is not that Yudhishthira did not study all this, did not know all this. 
all the time they were in the forest yudhishthira was interacting with the rishis and things like that it fell on arjuna to stockpile all the missiles <laughs> and weapons <laughs> yudhishthira was too much of a, a little bit of a recluse that way huh? he was a king all right the pandava was respecting him as that he was a maharathi all right all there was true but in the forest he said let me use this chance to gain all the spiritual knowledge anyway i'm stuck in the forest and the weapon specialist was arjuna actually <coughs> even though yudhishthira was a maharathi nobody could touch arjuna in the art of war so it fell on him to gather all the missiles etc so when he did that you have all the different stories and i went to indra got the went to shiva got pashupati got this got that all there is stockpiling arms and weapons for the war so 12 years he prepared for that so when when the problem came up the existential issue see it's something like that anything can trigger us to think of the truth you and me small challenges of life is enough small issues are enough to trigger it up because small issues become a big thing for us but arjuna was a hugely competent person small things will become something that he'll sweat it off <laughs> like a fly chalo <laughs> he needed a big challenge for it to trigger it off <laughs> that's why he required the war where he has to kill people whom he loves such a big issue then it triggered off okay okay what is this whole purpose of thing yeah it is lying dormant like in everyone it lies dormant this question lies dormant in everyone but for it to come to the forefront you need something to trigger it off so in him that huge thing triggered it off so he asked because he asked he got it yudhishthira in a way had insights about all this he had insights about all that is not that bhima also was not exposed to this he was bhima's personality in the mahabharata is presented as fun loving boyish boisterous that was an image cultivation it's an image cultivation he ran the secret service the home security yeah he ran the home security for the pandavas <laughs> yeah <laughs> so he needed that image of being a boisterous no nonsense you know fun loving character that was an image cultivated to hide what he was capable of <laughs> to hide what is capable of that's why when they come back from the forest first time you know when the house of lack was burned down and everything that time when they come back all the others are going to play pay respects to bhishma grand sir bhima says you you all go ahead i will come later he goes and meets all the mallas mallas were people who are expert in unarmed combat and they were working as guards in all the houses of the nobles in the kingdom so he gets all the information from them <laughs> of what is happening who is thinking what everything he has got all his spies placed everywhere <laughs> and then he goes to meet bhishma alone very much later and the first thing bhishma asks him is what have you found out <laughs> only bhishma knew what the role this guy was playing <laughs> yeah so it's not that bhima was not exposed to all this but the image he cultivated was different similarly nakula and sahadeva all the five brothers nakula and sahadeva were they were overshadowed a little bit by the other three when it comes to the story part of it but they were all phenomenally wise people yeah phenomenally wise people especially in the field of astrology all the vedic arts na no? the shadangas the angas of vedic wisdom they were all expert in that yeah. thanks thanks for clarifying <laughs> yeah, yeah. actually i the reason i asked this question because i was in a dilemma yeah is garuraj uh, vishter did everything what is yeah Right as 
definitely you classified it yeah definitely knocking or walking the path of dharma is not enough unless you gain that moksha ichha it is not enough to gain moksha because there can be very dharmic people very good people i know some of them personally very well excellent people like there is one of my friends friend student he came to me as an 18 year old okay so all growth issues he takes part in not vedanta so also his wife his wife is one of the most a person of great personal integrity phenomenal personal integrity want to honest opinion about her anything ask her she will tell it to you but they are not yet chosen the path of moksha as <laughs> if these characters choose they'll get it very fast <laughs> integrity etc is all there in them no yeah. but uh, that moksha ichha has not come up enough the desire for moksha is weak everything else is there handling the mind all that is fine moksha ichha is not there so yeah those are difficult things as for a teacher to see you know come on yaar these people are capable kizar mar raha hai where are they doing uh, why don't they get it yes yeah, sunita thank you to that question swami ji what what what, uh, what what could trigger uh, momukshitwa what so could trigger Yeah, what to could yeah if you are looking at a trigger for moksha in an organized manner i would say to recognize the existential issues in life that's why all my introduction of the gita starts with that to recognize the existential issues that li- life does not have a solution <laughs> in modern management or psychology or modern philosophies including existentialism there is no solution to the problem of life if you understand that and instead of saying since there is no solution you only have to manage it and put up with it instead of saying that to see is there a solution possible as you remember you one of the students in the bandra class when i was introducing this she asked me is there really a solution to that <laughs> you remember that you were there in that class no is there really a solution to that I said yeah there is so once you recognize that part of it so in one some ways you have to take a good hard look at yourself and see that even though you are okay you are not okay <laughs> psychologically i am okay but i am not okay because life has got too many issues to get in touch with my core dissatisfaction the unwept sorrow in every heart to get in touch with that which is getting more and more difficult in today's world because our whole culture is escapist art music everything nowadays is all movies all escapist fare there's no one to make you look at yourself yeah. so another way is to get people exposed to subculture books siddhartha Jonathan Livingston Seagal books like that you know uh, the razor's edge by somerset mom books like that so where sunny you'll think are yaar what there is something more in life you know yeah and of course our formal reaching out vedic wisdom festival public talks all those things <laughs> yeah but definitely people have to take a good hard look at their own lives and said i'm fine i'm okay but these issues persist uh mukherj yeah this question here in the same lines so is vedanta giving a solution to the problem or is it dismissing the problem because these issues like yeah will still per- yeah good question is vedanta solving the issue or dismissing the issue the solution is in the form of a dismissal because look at it your issue of finitude purposeless etc is taken care of 
But in the quest process of taking care of, you realize it is not really there. It is a very peculiar thing because it is like you are afraid of the snake on the rope. The problem exists. You can't say there is no problem because you are experiencing it. So the solution is in terms of seeing that there is no rope, there is no snake, there is only a rope. Yeah. So in a way it is dismissal. But the dismissal is solving the issue. That's why the beginning of the teaching, Ashochyan Anvashochahatvam. You are grieving over that which does not deserve grief. So he is accepting the problem, you are grieving. At the same time, he is dismissing the problem and saying there is no real grief necessary. You know, the Vedanta teacher is put in a difficult situation. If he says, yes, 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 you have a problem, I will help you with it. Then you are validating the problem too much. Now, if the Vedanta the teacher says, go fish, there is no problem. The guy will say, he is a heartless character. Yaar. I am suffering here and the guy doesn't even have the compassion to understand that. <laughs> so, now you have to walk that tightrope. Within showing that compassion, at the same time, not over-validating the problem. Not building up the problem. You know, you have to walk that tightrope and... Uh, Handle the problem for the person. To show the person that there is no real need. There is no real problem. The problem was born of ignorance. But because there is no real problem, doesn't mean that the person who has a problem is, has, should not look for a solution. He can't say there is no real problem and sit down. He is in grief. He is miserable. He is searching for happiness. And you can't tell the person, oh, there is no problem. I'll sit down. You won't get it. <laughs> so, not searching will not make you get it. Searching also will not get it. Because the very seeking is the confirmation of the problem, isn't it? <laughs> when you are seeking, it is like you have seen that uh, snake and you have picked up a stick. Ready to go. Whack. But there's only confirming <laughs> the snake is not going to die or go away like that. <laughs> so you are stuck in between. So the solution also has to come in between. That these two it has to come in. Validate the person's grief because it is there, it exists. Show it is not tenable, it's not valid, it's born of ignorance. So knowledge becomes the solution. That's why 66th verse. He spends so much of time. In fact, if you look at the Bhashya, Shankara's commentary, he writes pages just to show that by karma it is not possible, only knowledge is possible. So, it's a tricky thing, place. So, the teaching also has to be like that. <laughs> yeah. Walking that tight rope. Thank you, Maharaj. So okay. Good, but good questions are coming up. Yes. Any other questions? Swamiji, you always said, uh, yeah. what you saying, na karma nye moksha. Hmm. Yeah, knowledge is the only solution. Yeah. But what we do, which is shravanam, hmm. isn't what, wouldn't that also qualify as <laughs> yeah. karma? Yeah. Yeah. That is a peculiar state, you know. Uh, when you say, Shravanam is also karma in a way, we will put it as using a pramana. Because when we say na karmana, we are using a little bit technical way of it. In the sense, karma implies a choice. Karma implies that the goal that I have, the result that I want, is other than me. Okay? And it is a finite thing. So these three things minimum have to be there when any karma is involved. 
whereas moksha ichha even though you choose moksha really speaking it is choiceless once you are on the track you realize it is choiceless who can choose for unhappiness yaar i want ananda in a way it is choiceless number 2 how much when it comes to a karma i can do it i need not do it i can do it in 100 different ways when it comes to knowledge that option is not available this is a pen means this is a pen you can't say i know it differently you can't say i'll take it like that you can take it as anything but that won't be knowledge of the pen so if you have to know the pen you have to know it as a pen there is choiceless number 2 you have to use a pramana a means of knowledge the other part is you have to use a means of knowledge so using a means of knowledge is not karma like opening my eyes and seeing is not karma i'm opening my ears and listening karma is coming to the place where the class is setting up the infrastructure whatever you need in terms of laptop this that all that is karma but the actual learning is not karma dependent getting your mind ready of course karma is there that's why there is something called knowing and doing doing is meant for finite results okay that's why that famous paribhasha is there in sanskrit you know paribhasha means certain rules for interpretation etc okay param chet nyatavyam aparam chet kartavyam aparam it's a finite thing kartavyam it has to be achieved by action alone param chet is infinite it can't be achieved by action nyatavyam it has to be known recognized so it looks as though there is karma because i'm here going to the class this that etc yeah all that is karma <laughs> but listening the final step is not karma based all that is only preparation setting up the background yeah. correct yeah mm-hmm. any other questions uh, maharaj yeah For example, twelfth chapter, mm. like Advaita, Saruputa, Nama, mm. Mitra, Karuna, mm. Nirmono, etc., etc. Yeah. So, like, is there a, is there a test for myself? Like, how much <laughs> no. I have understood? <laughs> no, it is more like a that lakshanas of a wise person that they are given. Second chapter of <laughs> so many places is given. <laughs> they are all certain guidelines. that these qualities will be naturally there in a wise person so it is like more like benchmarking for ourselves you can't go to a teacher and says does he have this advaita sarva bhutana now how are you going to know that yeah not possible <laughs> he is rooted in his knowledge how do you know he is rooted or not because one thing with all wise people this is more in zen but it is there in vedanta also to a certain extent you live normal right many zen masters live very ordinary lives <coughs> following the adesha of the teaching murkhavat acharet once you gain this knowledge how you should live like the other fools in the society <laughs> following this adesha they live very normal lives okay in vedanta just because people may not know there is a sanyasi uniform available <laughs> so people can know okay here are people who are committed to the learning and teaching of vedanta therefore i can go and learn from them so there is just meant for like that because if we look at it the upanishad rishis may not always have been sanyasis some of them were householders yagna velka was a householder he had two wives not one <laughs> and he was a phenomenally rich man yeah huge ashram thousands of cows you know yeah parishrama's ashram if you look at parishrama's ashram at any given time there were half a dozen shatakas there shatakas were 
he divided his students into groups of 100 shatam 100 and he used to teach vedanta as well as the art of war so at any time there were half a dozen shatakas meaning 100 chariot warriors in each shataka half a dozen meaning 500 600 chariot warriors in an ashram setup can you imagine how big the ashram has to be <laughs> 100 acres is nothing <laughs> Yeah, so some ashrams are big like that. So people went and learned whatever they wanted to. Some are small, tiny. There are teachers also staying in one kutiya and teaching. People come to them, they will teach. Like Tapavan Maharaj's kutiya is preserved in Uttarkashi. Small little place, just enough for one person to sleep inside. And there's a veranda where you used to sit outside and teach. So. So, sannyasis were there, householders were there. So, after Shankara's time, he found this issue that people have to know that you go and learn from these people, otherwise they will all get confused by lot of different things that are happening. So, what he did was, he formalized that sannyasa into dasanama sannyasa. You know, ten names, Saraswati, Puri, etc. like that, ten names and formalized it so that People know, here is a purse, you can go and learn. If someone like this is running an ashram, etc., there should be Vedanta teaching there, you can go and learn. Yeah. So that's how it came about. So that's the only way you will know where, where to find a teacher, you know. Yeah. Then, but unfortunately, in today's world, there are many ashrams where there is no teaching happening. People come there, live, do their own sadhana, this, that, etc., which is good. But uh, many ashrams are lying without teaching happening. Yeah. In fact, before I set up trying to you know find a place to build up an ashram, etc., I tried to contact some of these people where you say, can I use your ashram only to teach? I will raise funds for running the course, this, that, etc. I spoke to a couple of them. But somehow they were not feeling secure enough for that. You know? Yeah. Otherwise, it would have been good. Why, why are you going to build a whole ashram setup? All you need is a place to teach. Ho I mean, I could have gone Mathura, etc. People were ready to offer, but not near Bombay, where most of my students are. You know, yeah. Though there are a couple of ashrams lying practically empty, with hardly anything happening. I know those people. We have a great regard for each other. All this is there, but here in this that cooperation is a little bit difficult. However, that was the first option. Kali ki prabhav hai, yes, sir. Don't worry too much about it. <laughs> Any other questions? Connection is a bit poor by the look of it. Am I appearing frozen to you all or what? Hmm. One second. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that is where we stand today in the whole. Yes. So because of that, we can't really look at the Sita Pragna Lakshana etc. as signs of a vice versa. Like for example, a classical example was Swami Chinmayananji. He could get angry very fast. Drop of a hat. He would erupt like a volcano. And the, but the anger is over in one minute flat. One minute flat is over. So now what do you tell it? It's, a, it's just a habitual anger. It is not real anger. And could he have got over it? Yeah, he could have got over it. But he didn't bother to get over it. Okay? He didn't bother to handle it. Yeah. So because he didn't bother to handle it, it continued. Yeah. 
but others like my teacher etc he bothered to handle it and therefore the anger etc was not there yeah. so it depends on people to people how it is yeah. personality wise all wise people are very very different very different so there is no real sign that is why shankara in his uh, work viveka chudamni a beginners text which i don't teach i say it's so easy people can after reading after listening to the geeta from me people can read viveka chudamni on their own and understand it it's a beautiful text by the way okay very beautiful text 30 verses why i am not the body 40 verses why i am not the mind there is nothing to teach there's something to understand just read and understand that's all yeah so in there he says manushyatvam mumukshutvam mahapurusha samashraya durlabham trayame etat ishwara anugraha hetukam three things are very difficult to get in life he says one is a human body manushyatva second is mumukshutvam in that the desire for moksha third mahapurusha samashraya mahapurusha saying okay i'll teach you durlabham treme vet very difficult to get this then how do you get it deva anugraha hetukam god's grace only that's why you pray you pray for knowledge when you pray for knowledge actually you are speaking you are praying for somebody to come and teach you but you have to be careful i was the teacher may appear and you are still too busy praying for a teacher <laughs> i told you the story of my friend na guru charitam she was reading to get a guru and the guru is there yeah, but no this time i can't attend because i have to read guru charit maybe <laughs> that's where karma becomes a conditioning where your devotion becomes a conditioning one can't afford to let devotion also become a condition possibly because that person was not prepared to yeah uh, not ready uh, to learn uh, exactly yeah yeah not yeah. ready to learn true yeah. if you are ready to learn you learn from anyone I mean, I remember when I first started my Chambur class, not this class, the one before this. One person walked into the class. Now that class was started in someone's office. Okay, the office had a hall, a small hall, where about twenty people could sit and started. So when he entered the office, and the main entrance, the huge Ganesha, this thing, and a lamp was lit there, etc. Then he came into the hall where I was taking the class. There is no photograph. There is no this. Do you see anything in the background here? No? some lord ishwara's photograph guru's photograph ah, kuch nahi hai the hall was also like that so he said this person is not a traditional teacher and he walked away i said okay ki farak payende <laughs> what different does it make to me if you walk you go there is another person who came to my class he listened to puja swam ji and then he came to my class said this character and that time i was in white okay i had not yet worn saffron i was in white this guy he is going to teach he looks so different he looks so modern but then he is swamiji student so let me sit so he sat for one class and then then he continued for the next 25 years <laughs> so this two people coming to the same person responses are different So what to do? Swami ji, uh, prarabdha also comes into play, you know, I mean. Yeah, prarabdha definitely comes into play. To be there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Prarabdha definitely comes into play. If your and you will know if your guru is strong, if your shani is strong, then definitely moksha is there. Shani is strong specially. 
moksha is there in your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course, there is Raj, uh, sannyasa yoga, etc. That horoscope speak about, but that's a different thing. But even this much is there, na? Shani is strong. Then you make a choice, you'll get it. Guru strong also is good. Only thing is, Guru strong will give you a lot of prosperity and things like that. So it may take you some time to come to Vedanta. <laughs> You know, to come to Vedanta, you need a very, very mixed type of fate, you know. Where there should be some relative comfort in your life to be able to make choices without having to do something. At the same time, things can't be too comfortable that you are caught up. At this Vedic Wisdom Festival, we are getting a speaker who would have become a sannyasi. If not the fact that if that time he had not stepped up and taken charge of the business after his father died, a hundred families would have been on the road. <laughs> but his Vedanta, with his vision is very clear. He's few years younger than me. We started off more or less together. Yeah. Yeah. So, there, the wealth prevented him from being too much of a full-time thing. You know? But it helped him to arrange his life in such a manner that he could listen to all Swamiji's talks. <laughs> so it works both ways. <laughs> yeah, it works both ways. You have to learn how to use it. You have to learn how to use the circumstances of your life towards moksha. This is the teaching of the Gita. This is where the whole question of Karma Yoga comes up. How do you juggle around, use your life on the journey towards moksha? So go with the flow in certain things, deviate in certain things. You may have to deviate. Yeah. But not losing sight uh, of yeah, the yeah. at any point of time. Not losing sight of the goal, the moksha, yes, of jnanam, atma jnanam. It is not the lifestyle that is the goal. It is the knowledge that is the goal. Yeah. You know, people marry often because most of the teachers who teach are sadhus. Sannyasis. Because of that, people think that to be gain the knowledge for myself, I should become like that. Not necessary. N knowledge is the goal. Keep the knowledge as the goal, then you are fine. You know? Yeah. Even all my life, I have lived only keeping knowledge as a focus. Not lifestyle, not my role, whether I am a teacher or a sadhu or a sannyasi or those were secondary to me. Even now it is secondary. That's why I joke, this is a uniform. You know? <laughs> All my life I own some uniform or the other. <laughs> the white of the navy, to the white of a acharya, to the saffron of a sadhu. All my life some uniform I own. <laughs> so, I joke about it. That's the secondary. Lifestyle is secondary. Knowledge, keep knowledge as primary, that I will gain this knowledge under any cost. Whatever happens, I will. Yeah. Keep the learning alive. Then you will learn from other sources also, any source. See, when you listen to, even though personalities may be very different. Okay, all of you know Swamini, right? Brahma Pragna. Her personality and mine are so different, though she is my... I was her initial teacher. She studied with me for 12 years before she went to do a course under my teacher. Okay. Our personalities are so different. Anyone who has worked closely with both of us know that. But if you listen to the traditional teaching, you know, oh, this tradition, it fits in. There, there is not much of a difference. Personalities influence it, but basic traditional teaching remains the same. My teacher and me. For me, Puja Swamiji, Swami Dayananji, he is my guru. 
everyone else was acharyas i am totally committed but personalities were so different yeah puja samjhe na personalities were very different he was a king of compassion i am ready to whack off some whack somebody <laughs> happily <laughs> personality wise so different he used to love singing i can't sing for nuts he used to love love cricket i find it's a little bit of a boring game i prefer my martial arts so personality wise so different but traditional teaching is traditional teaching doesn't change keeping the parampara going yeah so the teaching you look at the teaching if at all you are going to a teacher to find to learn to see whether you can learn from him also look at how the teaching happens if the teaching is traditional that's fine so one day i'll speak on what is traditional teaching also okay i'll highlight those facets of it because traditional teaching is not the way you dress the way you conduct yourself the way you do the setting yeah like if you look at swamini she like to do the setting of you know a nice altar plus some greenery around all that i have come from too much of a sadhu background rishikesh background sikhana hai ha theek hai baith lo sit under the tree and teach that's it i come from that type of a thing oh lighting has to be proper this only now i am little, little bit paying some basic attention to these things because it is online and then recording is there therefore some basic i will pay attention to it otherwise i am old school i will sit down under a tree and teach so personality different traditional teaching is how you use the words finite words to point out the truth the limitless truth the infinite reality is presented using finite words so you have to learn to handle the limitations of the words etc if you can do that and let the words work their magic you are a traditional teacher everything else is secondary krishna read once he became dwarakadish or even before the by the time he reached mathura etc he led a very comfortable luxurious life before that no he was a gopala okay but after that hmm. but in his teaching how was he okay let us sit in a quiet place where there is nobody to disturb us is that is that again the trumpets are bl- uh, blaring the drums are on the martial music is on the horses are neighing elephants are trumpeting and he is sitting and teaching and who is the student arjuna equally undisturbed theek hai let that happen i will sit and teach i will learn krishna will sit and teach and i will sit and learn <laughs> the student was a much married man the teacher even more so <laughs> both were warriors no problem sir the teaching is traditional if you look at the geeta the teaching is so traditional yeah so that is where you know very difficult to find out whom to learn from god's grace necessary I mean, I know most people here. Hopefully, think they come to the right source. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But look for these things, you know. Don't postpone moksha. Say now, not you will become awareness. You are awareness. You are that consciousness. Those those are few things you have to. Not you will transcend and realize it. You are it right now, pending recognition. You know, postponement. Then you know, okay. this guy is tradition but as you learn and understand better 
you'll be able to recognize better. It takes some learning to recognize that. Any other questions? Okay, okay. Yeah, you see, the end of the Mahabharata or Vyasa writing, there is a little bit of a story that says all the people, when they put Parikshit as the Arjuna's grandson on the throne and walked away. This is a tradition that you walk away into the forest for learning. Okay? Actually, it is meant to gain Nishta in the knowledge. Sanyasa lifestyle is meant for Nishta and the knowledge. That's why you walk away into the forest. Now, Vyasa deliberately presents there as Swarga because he wanted to highlight certain things. What is it that he wanted to highlight? One, Yudhishthira's commitment to Dharma. He will not leave Dharma at any cost. That's why the story of the dog. Number two, Yudhishthira was a great soul. He could go to heaven in his physical body. Another thing he wanted to highlight. Okay? So I don't think that's a great plus point. Because anyway, once you go to heaven, you will have to change the body. Why? Always you will be very you will feel more isolated and lonely. Because you will be the only human being and all the divine beings there. <laughs> so that will be the ultimate isolation. Okay. But anyway, he wanted to highlight. Third, he wanted to highlight was another point that whether you are Punya Papa, whatever is less, you will experience first. Like you just had very little Papa. You know. Therefore, a few hours in hell, he went and then came back to heaven. Whereas, uh, these people, Duryodhana and all had more Papa, less Punya. Therefore, they were in heaven first. Even the Pandavas, they had some Papa. You can't live a human life without having some Papa. So, just to highlight that fact, he put that story there. Not to be taken literally. Because after understanding the truth, where is heaven and hell? Oh, yeah, where is heaven and hell? There is no heaven and hell. That's just highlighting this. <coughs> These two, three points to highlight, he puts in that story there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And they also say that the first one want that anyone who had a fault in his life could not go to heaven in their body. Draupadi's fault was his, he loved, she loved Arjuna more than the others. Can you blame her? <laughs> Who said you have to love everyone equally here? Yeah? Come on. It's not feasible for human beings. <clears throat> okay. So everyone had a flaw in their personality. Fine. Everyone had a flaw. So just to highlight that personality wise, again, everyone will have a flaw. You only have to come home to know what my flaws are. <laughs> The Swami mess that is there, all the papers all over this. <laughs> Swamiji, the problem which I face here is after hearing your lecture for so many years now, yeah. my wife says, I don't see much of improvement in you. What is it? Much of? I my change. change in me. Sorry, I didn't get that. Much of improvement in? Change, change. You will not see any change. No. <laughs> I'm teaching. I'm teaching. You are changeless, not you are changing. <laughs> and you can answer this question, you know. And yeah. they expect that hundred percent on from all 
It won't be. No, no teacher is perfect. It's not possible. It's not possible. Like, like my, my, my guru, whom I think was one of the greatest gurus available, he said in publicly so many times, you know, publicly meaning with all the students who were there in the ashram and everything. He said, everything I could manage, I couldn't manage my compassion. He said that. I was too compassionate with people. So there are one or two places where I had to step in and become tough with people because he was too compassionate. <laughs> yeah. Because like it happens. Good, like good cop, bad cop. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I had to be the bad cop. <laughs> he was genuinely a good cop. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay that's what he was. None of us are perfect. Personality-wise, behavior-wise, is impossible. We all will have our flaws. We all will have our flaws. And that's okay. Because that is finitude. Remember this. Your personality is not becoming infinite. You, the consciousness, is limitless. You, the consciousness, is perfection as it is. Not your personality. Your personality will have its faults. Will have its flaws. Yeah. Definitely will have. I had another senior student of Swamiji, senior teacher under him. He looks up, more cloak, but I'm more, 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 more. <laughs> He would say that. More, 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 more. He is now 92 year old. He is confined to a wheelchair. But he supervises the ashram. So he caught hold of a employee not doing his job. He says, मैं ये व्हीलचेयर में है जिसके समझ के मत देखो कि मैं कुछ कर नहीं सकता <laughs> मार मार के ठीक करेगा यू कैन वर्क प्रॉपरली देखो देखो अट मोटराइज व्हील चेयर यू कैन गो ऑल ओवर द आश्रम टू चेकअप एवरीथिंग एंड स्टिल डजेंट सो पर्सनैलिटी वाइज ऑल डिफरेंट इज ओके Yeah. Uh, Swamiji, I I'm just want to clarify this that uh, I heard somewhere I I have not read it I have heard that in Mahabharata Arjuna again asked Krishna to teach yeah. Gita. Yeah. Some I don't know. Like, yeah. Is, See, at the end of the whole Mahabharata battle, and when they were relaxing up in the palace, Arjuna asked Krishna, "You know, your teaching was so fantastic, but I never had the time to really savor the whole thing." You know. <laughs> Can you repeat your teaching to me? <laughs> so Krishna says that was at that time and place. I can't say the same thing again. But I'll give you an abstract of the whole thing. And he teaches, gives him an abstract. That it doesn't come because he didn't know. It comes from the joy of listening again. You know, I did a whole course under Puja Swamiji. I spent years in Rishikesh. Okay, seven years in Rishikesh. Three-year course, studied lot of advanced text, etc. And I used to organize Swamiji talks in Bombay. Would you Swamiji talks right from eighty-four, eighty-three, eighty-four onwards, eighty-five onwards? I organized until for twenty years. I organized. And every class, I would sit down. I'm organizing. Yes, I'm looking, keeping an eye on that thing. But once Swamiji starts teaching, I am there in the in this thing. Why? Not that because I don't know. Such a great joy to listen to the whole thing again. He is talking about public talk. We are not even talking about serious text. We are talking about public talk. But Mr. Enjoy, oh God, what a way of putting that! It is so beautiful. Yeah. So same way, Arjuna asks Krishna again. You know, <laughs> can you teach me the whole thing again? <laughs> yeah. He says that. Thank you, sir. Why at the end of his life? Towards the end, his relative, his friend, his follower, Uddhava goes and asks him about the knowledge. That comes under a book called Uddhava Gita. Is there the book called Uddhava Gita? Is there? Yeah. So he is taught in various ways, various places. Yeah. 
anyway, past 6.35, good place to stop. I still have to do some summary, etc. But I thought that is why I kept this month for clarifications, summary, everything. I will do all that. Okay? This whole month will go in that. And after Vedic Wisdom Festival, we will start the new class. Okay? Good place to stop. Oh, that's sir. <laughs>